Welcome to Mr. Ding Ding. Over 10 years ago, a zoology lecturer advised against provoking local bees in Brazil or South America, especially if traveling to the American continent in the future. Bees are a pre-existing biological crisis that has been causing a swarm attack within half a minute. Even the noise of a mower machine can irritate bees, making them dangerous to humans. Theoretically, only 500 stings can potentially end a strong person's life. Avoid running away, as they can chase you up to one kilometers, and avoid hiding in water, as they will wait patiently. They are called killer bees. After an accident happened in a laboratory 63 years ago, they were released to the nature. Let's talk about their story today. In 1986, a research team from the University of Miami's biology department arrived in Central America, led by 24-year-old Insiang Ui from Malaysia, who walked alone at the front of the team. A man found a cave large enough for him to walk in, curious about new bat species or unknown insects. He continued to explore, finding a large number of bees. However, he had a bad feeling and quickly climbed out. Mr. S was irritated by the bright light of a torch in a cave, and his teammates heard him screaming. They quickly found him climbing out, surrounded by a cloud of bees. Mr. S fell on the ground, stopped screaming, and moaned in pain, his voice echoing in the forest. Two fellows saved Mr. S from bees by covering their heads with jackets. They were stung and hurt, realizing they were a new species. The poison was flowing through their body, causing their heartbeat rate to drop rapidly, blood pressure to crash, and they bead faster. If the poison reached its lethal dose, their immune system would be defeated. Mr. S, a team member, died from kidney failure after being stung by bees for at least 8,000 times in a 10-minute period. The bees had stings on every inch square of Mr. S's skin, causing him to collapse and eventually die. The rescue team found that Mr. S had been stung by bees at least 45 times in 10 minutes, causing fear and panic among his teammates. Around 1.5 billion killer bees exist globally, primarily in the Americas. Their origin is believed to have been discovered by a biologist named Warwick Estevam Kerr, who arrived in South Africa 30 years before Mr. S's death. Kerr was excited to find 47 African queen bees prepared by a local beekeeper. A man was stung by a bee upon entering the hive, sabotaging his search for an irritable bee. Initially introduced by Europeans, the American continent had no bees, and their adaptation to the climate was challenging, resulting in low honey production. 1950s, Brazil increased its honey production as a national project. Research by Kerr revealed that the climates of Africa and Brazil were similar, and they proposed importing African bees and allowing them to cross with European bees to boost their production. A new Brazil bee species with strong adaptive ability and high honey production could be born, potentially distributing high-quality Brazil honey globally in the coming years leveraging Brazil's rich plant resources. The African bee, known for its adaptive power, has a natural enemy in the form of the honey badger. This fierce and short-haired animal, known for its aggressive behavior, can eat crocodiles, scorpions, vipers, lions, and leopards in its daily life. However, the honey badger, also known as the African bee, is its natural enemy, destroying bee hives and eating the honey and larvae inside. The African bee evolved to be aggressive to survive, capable of defeating honey badgers and even poisoning them to death. They also evolved to protect themselves from top predators like elephants and lions, ensuring their survival. In Professor Kerr's story, an isopalating slide was designed to allow smaller worker bees to pass through while larger queen bees and drones were kept inside the skep. 
the worker bee, lacking reproductive ability, was kept in the bee colony. This situation highlights the challenges faced by bees in America. Kerr aimed to study the adaptation of queen bees and drones to their environment through cross-experimentation. However, a seasonal worker arrived in October 1957, claiming that the slides with tiny holes on the skip hindered the efficiency of the entire bee colony, which made it unlogical. Professor Kerr removed the isopolating slide and discovered 27 queen bees and drones had escaped, fleeing to the America continent. In the rookie continent, they crossed with the local European bee, creating a new species that mates all year round, unlike the European bee that mates once a year. A queen bee could produce 200,000 eggs daily, resulting in 600,000 bees a year. Seven years later, an army of mudant creatures secretly expanded in the wild, causing them to appear in Brazil. Professor Kerr was contacted by Rio City after a sudden influx of aggressive bees appeared in the street, causing harm to tourists and even chasing people in the busy area. Professor Kerr identified bees in Rio City that escaped from his lab seven years ago, having undergone mutations and becoming more aggressive than the Africa bee species. Rio City was in panic after two people were stung by Africanized bees, leading to media calls for a solution. Scientists claimed they had no solution other than repelling the bees, as their numbers in the wild are increasing and their variation is getting bigger. Scientists may promise to repel bees completely, but their future situation will worsen as they expand secretly in the wild, undetected by humans. In 1975, a Brazilian scientist conducted an experiment using a small bait to irritate killer bees, resulting in the release of 50 thousands of bees in 34 seconds. The lethal dose for humans was 500 times stung in two minutes. The bees also grew rapidly in the wild at 250 kilometers per year. The prediction was that the killer bee would invade America around 2000, not just Brazil, but the entire America continent. However, America failed to pay attention, leading to a worsening situation, with the bee invading Texas 10 years earlier than anticipated. Scientists reported a billion killer bees and urged authorities to address the problem. However, in the first six months, the bees avoided human attention and chose to reproduce secretly. In 1991, media reported an attack on killer bees in South America highlighting the need for urgent action. On a beautiful spring evening in Texas, Diaz was mowing his lawn when he noticed a swarm of killer bees in his garden. These bees could sense threats from animals, humans, or strange noises. If a worker bee releases pheromones, the entire swarm attacks within half a minute. Diaz was unaware of a hidden killer beehive in his garden at the time. In the evening, Diaz was unprepared for the attack by killer bees, who released pheromones due to the noise of a lawnmower. The buzzing sound covered the bees' attack, causing hundreds of them to swarm Diaz. Diaz was attacked by killer bees, primarily targeting a lawnmower. Fortunately, he was brought to the hospital and survived. The bees also invaded Florida via cargo ships. A woman's two dogs, tied in her garden, began barking loudly and she found thousands of bees attacking her dogs through a glass window. Bees are typically not sensitive to black color, but Sea Lady's dogs were attacked by killer bees without any indication. After five minutes, the dogs stopped barking and lied on the ground, losing signs of life. The bees disappeared, and scientists arrived in a rush to investigate the situation. The incident reveals that the killer bee mutation in the wild is out of control. Bees rarely attack themselves due to the risk of their tail being stuck on their prey, requiring them to leave their needle and inner organs before flying away. This poses a significant risk to a bee's life when it shoots its poisonous needle. Bees attack when they perceive the target as their predator, and two dogs belonging to Sea Lady have white fur on their heads a characteristic resembling the honey badger in Africa. In the 90s, South American people were terrified of killer bees, 
who could be found in mailboxes, ovens, or television sockets. Scientists argued that although Africanized bees could kill people, the total number of human deaths by bees was less than 1,000 worldwide before 2006. Governments are encouraging private capitals to start bee-killing companies, while scientists teach local beekeepers proper bee management techniques. Experts believe that proper management can prevent the spread of killer bees and effectively control the situation. In 1994, killer bees were discovered in Puerto Rico Island, and after strict management, they were tamed by 2006. However, their adaptive power and honey production matched those of African bees, as per Professor Kerr's wishes. This suggests that America has the ability to manage killer bees effectively. David Martyr, a 20-year-old bee booster, quickly responded to a call for help by using pheromones to control bees and eat honey calmly. He then armed himself and quickly destroyed the hive, the queen bee, and drones, along with the drones. Beekeepers are known to kill killer bees in bee yards to prevent them from mate with tamed bees. Simple and professional methods can help keep killer bees away from humans. However, two cases have raised public concern about the end of the problem. In January 2005, Hovey ran 11 clutter in Arizona's Saguaro National Park when a person approached him screaming for help. Hovey helped chase the bees above him, but soon became the target of the bees himself. He couldn't imagine how a swarm of 10,000 bees looked like. Hovey, feeling bees hit him, ran away exhausted and unable to climb a mountain. A field rescue helicopter arrived, saving his life with a shot of adrenaline. However, another person, another bee, was hospitalized for two months and would suffer from a lifelong heart disease. Researchers discovered that the bees attacking Hovey were actually killer bees that were hiding in the wild. While humans managed the city, they couldn't manage the entire wild area as the killer bees evolved secretly in the wild. In 2001, a beekeeper in Connecticut experienced a sudden attack from bees on his skep. The beekeeper was taking care of his skep, and the bees attacked him without warning. He hurried back to the room, feeling unwell. His last words became his last words, and his wife was crying while reporting to the police in the room, watching him fall on the grass outside. Scientists initially believed African killer bees couldn't invade Connecticut due to the cold winter. However, DNA research revealed that the bees had mutated, becoming a new species that resists cold, similar to the European bee, and is also aggressive. This discovery highlights the potential dangers of Africanized killer bees. The incident may have prompted humans to contemplate the future appearance of super killer bees. The Pacific Ocean prevents killer bees from crossing it to invade China. However, the unknown nature's power remains. A biological prediction suggests that if bees disappear, humans would only live for four years. If nature changes, humans would face a disaster if the bees were to disappear. What are your thoughts after seeing today's video? Feel free to leave your comments below. I appreciate you seeing. Greetings. Have a look at the next video.